Hey guys, so yesterday you might have seen me upload a message where I said that I might not be able to do daily uploads anymore until I get my computer upgraded. But actually I might have enough content to keep doing it since uh, the equipment seems to be arriving earlier than planned. So yeah, everything's looking good on that point except my wallet, but uh, yeah. So as I reinstall Windows, I did move over some files and when I was cleaning up my computer before moving it over, I ran into a folder where I apparently stored some of the greater games I've played. Well, interesting maybe, or s I don't know exactly greater is the right word, but at least good games that I store for some reason. And I run, ran into this game, and pretty much what this game is, it's uh, for the War, in War is Coming Grand Finals, there was a set map that was Scandinavia, Spanish War, and uh, we were practicing for this. And for some reason I stored this game, but I don't know exactly what happened or remember it exactly. So I thought it might be interesting to uh, take you along my ride down memory lane to see what happened. Because there must have been a reason why I actually uh, saved this game. So uh, I mean, let's just try jump straight into it. I'll be fast forwarding the Dark Age pretty quickly while we have a quick look at the maps. So yeah, my map is very oh wow, my map is really bad for the for a Scandinavian map. Look at the fish difference. Like fish is so important, especially in the Spanish War. So you can see all the deep fish yes all the way on this side of the water. Well, I one deep fish here, one deep fish there. So that's pretty huge. Uh, besides that, all my resources seem to be forward, which is never ideal. Uh, yeah, both stones, golds are forward, I have the ice on my side, so my map is not looking great at all, but I mean, I guess if I wall here, in these parts, I might be able to make it a decent map, but overall, my map is not good at all for a Scandinavian map. He has, uh, both his stones are exposed as well, if he walls this, then he can't take those, but if he walls further out, then he can make this into a really good Scandinavian map. So, map Map is definitely in favor of doubt. Let's just uh, fast forward more and see where this went. I think I remember slightly how it turned out, but the details, I don't know. But yeah, the fish, for example, is looking really in favor of doubt. Now again, this was practice for a set map in the grand final of War is Coming, which was the $100,000 tournament. The first prize was $40,000, so we really had to practice a lot take every map seriously. Idle Veil, come on Viper you noob. Yeah, both of us are just building up for a fast castle. Walling, securing areas. Look, we're practicing for the grand final, so we're taking this fairly seriously and executing it with walls and such. A yeah, really bad wood as well. Now look at it. But yeah. I'm gonna run through this game pretty quickly. I'm not. I wasn't planning on doing like a long commentary analysis, but let's see. So sloppy idle scout. Yeah, he's walled off his entire side, so he has a really good map right now. I mean, if I wall this and this and this, I guess I can turn my map into a decent map as well. But the uh, wood placement and such is not good at all. My deer is pretty far as well, so I need to expose my villagers to take them. But yeah, as you said. Hope he doesn't have good fish, because I had really bad fish. I made a second dock here as well, to take this deep fish. Yeah, as you can see, he's just hammering away at these deep, juicy fishes. Yeah, market blacksmith for both of us. Both of us are just going into Conquistador. Pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to keep fast-forwarding even more until there, there is some action. I don't remember exactly how it went, but I think as soon as I see like the castle age action take place, I think I'm gonna get more of an idea. I think this hill is pretty crucial in this game. Because it controls pretty much two golds, three golds, and also it's like the center point between our bases. But yeah, you can see his scouts that he has great fish here as well, so he's just following up with docks. Now since my map is pretty exposed and now he's going castle age and he was up like a minute before me as well, I wanna go on monks right away as well. 
because I know that he's gonna have the castle up before me. He can add a second TC right as well as well because he has a good map for wood and such. He's going here for a third TC as well. Yeah. While I'm just making my second TC. So as you can see in the uh, population count already, it's looking very much in favor of him. He already has five conks out as well while I only have two. To have one monk though, but this castle and TC should make this area fairly safe. Let's just have a quick look at the economy. I actually have a fairly similar food, food income, but if you see the wood, 400 difference, he has more and all the other resources as well. So I have to commit more on uh, villager food because of my bad fish. Well, he can just rely on this for pretty much his whole eco food economy for a while. He has 3 TC's, I'm still just on 2 TC's. So, as you can see from the population, it's not looking good for me at the moment. Especially with the map as well. So it's just, I'm keeping these monks here, trying to get some converts. If I was him, I would run away, but as you can see, he's getting a really good trade. I get one conversion and he kills 3 monks. That was really good for him. As I see, say, he was Teutons because they took so long to convert them. Yeah, he's in a really commanding position right now. There's 15 population difference after 22 minutes. That's never a good sign. Add a third TC here. You can see his economy is up and running. Oh, he should fix this. Put those here. Yeah, you can look at the score as well. You can tell there's tw almost 20 population difference. So, looking at the score, I feel pretty far behind as well. I'm trying to add a 4th TC, maybe try and catch up some way, but I have to play defensive. He's completely walled as well, and he has a castle in this area. And I know that I'm behind in Conquistador count as well, so I just need to play defensive with conks and monks. Try to grab a relic as well. This relic is probably up for grasp for me as well. Yeah, he's adding relics as well, and monks. Now there's an interesting thing with Spanish Wars, usually when you have, like in this position we are now, this hill is going to be so crucial, and Imperial times as well. And usually there are... Spanish War is tricky, because when it, you end up with always doing a... yeah, he did a forward cast here as well, taking control of this hill. He has the military lead, so he can do this and get away with it as well. Yeah, when... You play Conquistador Wars, usually Trap Wars and getting castles of the opponents is usually the main key. So yeah, you can see I'm still really low on, on food income while he is ready to click Imperial. So definitely not promising for me. Speed this up a little bit more while we're waiting. Yeah, he stopped villager production to go Imperial. So that's why I'm suddenly ahead in bills, but still I'm so far behind in uptime. I am saving though and using the market a little bit to try and get up. So I think I... Oh, I probably didn't see this castle. Maybe I did, I'm not sure. Yeah, I know I'm behind based on the scores. If he would have found this, it would have been really bad for me. Yeah, so I, I know that I'm behind and I know... Well, another interesting point to mention is... We've been, we've been practicing a while before this as well. And we've been playing around with styles as well, entering this, and that suggested using more monks in late game for Spanish War. I initially said, I think that's a bad idea, I don't think you should invest the gold into monks. But after playing a little bit around with it, I kind of changed my opinion and I started using monks much more in late game in Spanish War. As you can see, I've added three monasteries, so I'm kind of uh, agreeing with doubt, so I'm switching up my play for this. Still haven't told him that I agreed with him after playing around with it, but I I did. I'm a second castle here. Try and keep my economy safe, but both of them are exposed to traps. You see, since he's up before me, as you can see now, still with a 15 population advantage, I'm feeling in a pretty shitty position right now. Like the village account, I'm slightly ahead, but the positional advantage he has right now is such a big one. He has more military, he has the position in the map. Like he pretty much has traps and his castle in my face pretty much. And I have a really still like all my woods and everything are pretty much forward as well. I don't have like healers like back woods, back gold that I can just rely on. 
all my stuff is out in the front. So if I lose this position, then I'm pretty much done. So it's renting Imperial, of course. Jebs is his first priority. He's also using monks, but uh, he's doing like a plus three upgrade for it. But he's not committing as heavily as I am right now. Uh, I know by this point that I'm gonna lose this castle. I'm probably gonna lose this one as well. I'm gonna lose the Trev War, so I need to make uh, changes to my army composition. Uh, I can see tell that he's committing to Kistor still because. It is usually the strongest tactic, and also the amount of pieces that already has. There's no way, way that he's gonna switch out of it. So my thoughts now are: what are the weak points of Kistorors? Well, first of all, helps do a lot of damage to them. Secondly, also rams. Rams tank so much fire from Kistorors. So my uh, plan right now is just. Spit out the cheap uh, halberdiers, add rams, and try to use my monks extremely efficiently. I need to spend my gold somewhere, and since I can't catch up ever in Conquistador anymore, because I will have no castles, monks and rams is what my gold is going to go into, and I'm go just going to have to try and be efficient with that. You can see I'm 1,500 score behind, so like when I see this in-game, I'm pretty sure I'm dead. And pretty much, I think everyone, if you're almost 2,000 score behind after 30 minutes, then it's not looking good for you. So I'm just trying to buy time here, trying to repair the trap for as long as possible, and trying to still trying to use conversions to the best of my ability. I added a, another monastery in the back as well. Yeah, you can see the population. You still, I, I have, I am 10 villagers ahead. Of course, I don't know that in-game. I just see that he has the great advantage with this and also the score. Yeah, the only way I can come back from this, I felt, was if I make Conquistadors, I mean not Conquistadors, Halbs, Rams, and try to use my Monk as well. I'm still losing my front, I'm not going to be able to take this, I'm probably not going to be able to take this. I can push all of my economy here as well. So, at this point I'm feeling very like I need to push back quick, and not let him approach more. If he gets like a castle up here, which I actually, if I recall correctly, he might try to push for the castle here. Yeah, if he gets control of this area, then I'm losing my whole front, and then I'm pretty much done for. So I need to fight back in this area. So he's mixing in Conquistador. He knows that I have uh, Light Cavalry, I mean. He knows that I have a lot of monks, and probably that I'm still committing to them. So he's just preparing to raid and everything, and he's mixing in Light Cav now. As you can see, he's probably super confident now, looking at the scores. 2,000 points. And that's why he's pushing ahead. And he's also making a mistake not adding more economy. He should uh, uh, realize that his economy still isn't too strong. Because he only has 100 bills. But he does have 11 fish, so I guess it's okay. Yeah, this is where I need to fight back. I can't let him push further forward. So, mixing in the capture rams. They're taking some good... Um, tanking some good damage. And my hopes are getting some uh, some worth when they, once they get close up to the conquistadors. And also, as you can see, now I have 15 monks, so I need to... Like, that's potentially 15 of his army turning into mine. Especially with the range they have now. 12 range, they can outrange these for days. Also, I need to use these guys really efficiently. Pretty much, my whole game plan right now is efficiency. Fight efficiently, take good fights, don't just waste everything. And I need to keep adding rams. Rams is the only way I'm going to be able to push back his front and take out buildings. Since I don't have a castle, I can't make traps. At this point, let's look at his economy. Yeah, he still has a lot of gold, but he, he's probably... the fish efficiency is running out now, so he's probably not identified that yet, since he's not adding much more farms, and not adding more villagers as well. He should have been at around 120, 130 bills by now. Yeah, he's making a castle here, as I predicted. Well, actually, as I remembered. And if he takes control of this area, as I said, then all my production is gone. He's in the middle of my economy and everything, so... Now if you can see... But I do have a good population and good villager counts. I'm starting to feel like maybe I can come back if the composition stay the same. And also I'm preparing for a light cow, it seems. I do have this extra goal as well here, which is pretty much a savior for me, since I still have the goal to produce ramps and monks. 
Hey, it does have a close choke as well, which is really good for Pisadors. Yeah, I feel like this castle, if it, it gets like a strong stand here, then there's no way for me to come back. So I just need to keep trying to convert, and now I need to engage with my ramps. I think it might have been worth it for me to stop making helps to get Siege Ram. Actually, maybe not, I don't know. It's hard to tell. But yeah, his AI is kind of messing up a little bit because of all the conversions. But yeah, he's still taking this fight fairly confidently. As you can see, the score now racing to 3000. But yeah, I mean, like, you can see this. The monks do a good job. They get a lot of conversions and also they heal my units. So, looking at population as well. The fight isn't that... It looks like it's going well for him. But it's actually... I'm taking actually decent fights. I'm not losing my important units. And also, I'm pretty much trading uh, Conquistadors for helps. Of course, I lost a lot of monks, but they got their money's worth with all the conversions. Because you can see how few Conquistadors he has now compared to before. Yeah, I felt like I lowered his Conquistador count by quite a bit. So, if I just add ramps now, then I might be able to take out his uh, castle. Which was the first priority for me right now. And as you can see, I'm still doing conversions up here. And it, it, like, it buys a lot of time, because... Every time I convert a unit here, all these Conquistadors will spend one shot shooting down that Conquistador that I converted. So like you get value, your values worth for in more ways than just the actual conversion. Yeah, this castle is looking nice going down, so that's a good win for me. But still, like I look at my population, I'm 140, I look at the score, I'm 3000 score behind. But at the same time, I feel like I'm kind of gaining some ground, right? Since he's... Still, my composition is starting to turn out well against what he's making. And also, my monks are getting their money's worth. So, I'm starting to maybe get a little bit, a bit of hope. But again, I don't know what his village account looks like. I don't know these things. So, let's just look. Okay, I've gotten 26 conversions by now. That's like, probably most of them are con conquistadors, but probably some of them are uh, uh, monks as well. But still, like, so, see, just like two conks there, two conks there. It's such a big value in the longer run. Uh, his numbers keep thinning out, and he's on 93 villagers. Of course, I don't know that. He's using... he has the... oh, he doesn't have the upgrade, but he's using them to fight as well here, to take out ramps. So he's losing even more. So it's a sloppy job by him to not identify that his village account is so low, especially when you look at his food income. He's not got much food at all. Barely keep up production from all these buildings as well. So looking at the numbers now, it's starting to look up for me, right? But I'm still in the game, I don't see anything from his point of view. So what I see is just 3000 score lead, him still having the hill. I'm not able to make too much progress. But at the same time, I feel like I'm kind of overrunning him, right? Even though now it's suddenly looking bad again. But then, then again, look at even those three con four conversions here. How much smaller those made his units look, uh, his army look. So, monks in general, especially in these types of wars that you're seeing right here, they become so efficient when you have meat in front of them, and his uh, units are gold units that pretty much the main uh, main uh, steel of his army, right? So, like, one conversion here, two there, three there, they add up so much in the long run. Yeah, as you can see, I'm, I feel like I'm catching up a bit in score as well, it's only 2,000 now. I feel like I'm thinning out his army so much, while I can just keep spamming cheap units and ramps while I'm using my monks with good efficiency. So as you can see, I feel like I'm overrunning him right now. Overwhelming him, rather. If I just keep on the pressure, maybe I can take back this hill. And that would make uh, make this game suddenly close again. But still, from my point of view, I still think I'm far behind based on what I see. But when I see the numbers right now, I'm 30 villagers ahead. It's suddenly starting to look uh, promising on my end. So the score can lie in a lot of cases, as you can see here. Yeah, now my numbers are actually... Now I'm just overrunning him. He can't stay and fight because he will get too many units converted. And also once the halves get close, and see how fast the uh, Conquistadors die. Now if I only had Siege Ram, <laughs> this push would have been so much stronger. It's another almost 200 uh, health. Well, maybe it is over 200 health for the Siege Rams. No, that's just Celts. So yeah, 
yeah, still, even like this, I'm kind of overrunning him, and I'm still getting so many conver conversions done. Let's stop again and check the conversions right now. 44 conversions. That's 40 units of conquistadors. That's so much. If you actually think about it, how much uh, when the small differences make such a big uh, impact on a game at this level. Let's have supremacy now, so his villagers are strong, and they will take out uh, siege rams really quick. Yeah, still, like, I, what I see now, I recognize that his arm is small and it seems like he's struggling to produce, right? So, I just feel like I, if I just keep pushing now, then he should never be able to get back to a decent count. And he can't engage me properly, properly because of my monk army. I just keep converting conquistadors. He's trying to get in some raiding, but it's not really that efficient, because there are not too many units. And I'm preparing to raid him as well now. I have a good village account, so I can probably do this as well. I should probably have done Siege Ram though. Retrospect, this earlier. I'm now dropping a castle here to regain the most important part of the area of this game. Yeah, still, like, I can do this. I can run in with my, my uh, halves. If I kill two, three conks, that's worth it for me. Because uh, it's gold units for him and just trash units for me. Yeah, looking at the population now, it's looking real good for me, but still, look at the score. I'm almost 3,000 score behind, 2.5k behind, and I still see that in the game, so I still kind of think that it's a close game, but looking at the numbers right here, I would say that I'm pretty much in the lead right now, especially since he still has like 15 fishing boats that he's relying on for food income. Now I'm actually doing Siege Ram. That's a massive turning point in the game as well. He pretty much has no units that can deal with siege rams at the moment. And also now I'm getting some raiding in here, which is really nice. Disturbing his food economy even more. Yeah, he has to use a lot of villagers to fight as well now. You see, two and 270 hit points. The tank so much, so many shots from the Conquistadors. And it's just allowing me to take even more uh, uh, efficient conversions. I also have a treb out now, so I can at the same time fire with trebs. Which makes this push even harder now for him to hold. Yeah, so at this point, it's looking really good for me. Especially with the ramps keep streaming in. Also, I'm doing good raiding here now. Yeah, a lot of raiding. It's gonna hurt his economy a lot. Already an already weak economy. And he's losing on the front as well. Trying to add rams himself now, we probably should have done that earlier. Yeah, at this point, like I'm just taking two efficient fights. Uh white conks can't do shit. <laughs> well, because uh, rams Hobbs do well against conks and rams, rams uh, tank so much damage, but as you can see there, it was just like a cheeky message by me, always told you monks are OP, he was the one who told me monks are OP, and I didn't uh, ad agree to try monks at first, but as I tried them, I realized how strong they were, and with good micromanagement, they can pretty much be the difference maker in the long run. Yeah, he's pretty much throwing in the towel now with this, when you see this comment. He's complaining about their AI when they get attacked by... Uh, when they're getting converted. Yeah, it's pretty much over at this point, as you can see about populations as well. But you can see his score is still 2,000 points ahead of mine. 2.5k ahead of mine, actually. But he has to call the GD. So I think what this game shows that... Uh, even the positional advantage isn't enough if you keep making the wrong units. He never adapted to my uh, composition. He just he was too confident in his position based on how the early game went. That he just kept making only conks and uh, hussar. Well, I made the composition to counter that, and he never switched it up. You can't say that he if he knew how close the village counts, for example, was, then he probably might have taken it more. Uh, taken a different approach and made different choices, but I think he was a little bit too overconfident based on his position in the game. Still, it was a very nice comeback from us, and also uh, with the map disadvantage.
It also shows that the score can lie. You can see he's still over 2,000 points ahead when he's actually pretty far behind in this case. Yeah, that just, just goes to show you that monks, man, monks are strong. So if you can just make an efficient composition, look at these villagers running a marathon. If you can make a, an efficient composition, you don't necessarily need the more expensive, stronger on paper type of units. You just need the efficient composition. And then you can fight back. Yeah, expanding my economy here as well is nice. Let's see how many conversions I ended up on at. So, yeah, you can see this is probably why the score difference, uh, the reason for the score difference. He killed over 200 units more than me. Which is because I was throwing so many helps at him, probably. But look at this, 78 conversions. That's potentially, well, I think it was like maybe 5 or 6 monks. But around 70 converted conquistadors which was pretty much the only unit I was targeting with my monks. And imagine how much gold that is and how many units that actually is. It's pretty massive. Economist, he did have more food than me overall, but I guess he should have developed his economy better in Imperial Age. He also had more relics and castles, but yeah, those are really nice comeback. And just goes to show how strong monks can be in a scenario like this. Yeah, as I said, guys, I'll try to keep the daily uploads going until uh, I get my equipment. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.